contest to see who can spit buck poo as far as you can. Wow. My aunt is a champion. Your aunt is a champion buck poo spitter. Buck poo spitter, yeah. All right, welcome to Berkeley. About to walk down to the Mosaic Gym. New super cool climbing gym right next to the Berkeley campus. And do a really fun comp. I'm staying here at the beautiful house of the owner of the gym, along with Nathaniel and Chris and Maya and Kyra is just down the way at a hotel. So we're all about to meet up and do the qualifiers and then Tonight we're giving a whole presentation, or each of us are giving a presentation at one of the lecture halls on the Berkeley campus, so that'll be really interesting. And a first for me, giving a presentation to like 300 people or something like that. So maybe we'll include a couple clips of that. And then tomorrow night is the finals for the Telegraph Turnup. That's just the, the name of the comp. Should be a fun weekend. I'll try and include a bunch of tips for finding flow throughout the whole, the whole video. That's what my presentation is about. It's been interesting to write out exactly what the most helpful things have been for me, whether that's meditation or visualization or daily kind of strategy sessions for what I want to do the next day and reflecting on what I've done that day and learning the most out of the bowlers on and all that sort of stuff. So stay tuned. Hope you enjoy. We'll see you after qualifiers. All right, we're here at the comp. This is the first boulder right here. And then the second boulder is this pillar, and then third boulder. As you can see, we're at Mosaic Boulders today for the open qualifiers for the Telegraph Turnup competition. We've got a lot of strong climbers here, sending hard. We've got six climbs for open, but we're just warming up on all the other citizens' boulders in the street shoes, of course, keeping it playful, fast quick movements with the hands just to get everything connected. Nilo's the, the photographer for the event. Yeah. Nothing but the I'll highest tech. <laughs> Oh my god. Alright, that red one was the limit. 
So I like to have done that one second try. That red one was a great example of visualizing and I rehearsed every move a couple times. And I tried it once, didn't really feel the beta well, and then Chris kind of sprayed me on the beta for the top. It's so nice to have friends doing the competition as well because you can kind of share beta and compare what felt good and bad about each climb. The top of that one, just closed my eyes, ran through the sequence a couple times, and then got on it, and it honestly, it felt like I knew what every single move was supposed to be, even though they're heinously insecure. A little game I play, seeing how quickly you can ignore the nagging sensation that something's really insecure or difficult or about to slip, uh, especially on the white one, that last move, that left foot was probably the worst foot I've ever had to fully stand over and trust in a competition. But as I put my foot there and as I stood over it, every part of my body wanted to like adjust it or just bail off of it because I thought I was gonna slip. But you can just practice like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna trust it and if it slips, so be it. And I guess that really starts in your warm-up and seeking out little moves like that that push the level of what you think is insecure. Pro tip, get yourself a VIP area at your comps. Delicious. <laughs> Fueling up with lunch and then heading back to the house. Some chill time, practice my uh, little presentation and then we'll head over to the Berkeley lecture halls. It's like seven o'clock now, hitting a little post nap espresso, then do a, do a presentation and a panel. With Maya, and Connor, and Nathaniel, and Kyra, and Chris. What? <laughs> I didn't know you were doing the panel. Shout out to Mike, owner of Mosaic. Nathaniel's coffee habits are still a bit suspicious. <laughs> what did you get? I just got a straight up hot chocolate this time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's better than a hot chocolate with espresso in it, but damn. This is the most espresso I've ever gotten in like a double shot format. No boy, no. Yeah. I think okay. I did 103 and 106B at the same time. I just got a, I got a Cortado. It's in a cup. Yeah, <laughs> that's a problem. Any really good coffee, they just shouldn't serve it to you to go. They'd be like, no, you have to sit down and enjoy this here. Yeah, that's that's 100% fair. Yeah. Because the, the reusable cups like damage the flavor and like the heat, so. Yeah, and just, you need to be settled to the properly enjoy environment an art form flavor. like this. <laughs> environment affects flavor big time. It does, it does. It's kind of intimidating, not gonna lie. This is how the professors do it here at Berkeley. I feel like... Welcome to the presentation, everyone. Copy me. Led everyone through like a yoga, like a sun Why salutation. I would be psyched. Sure. It's if I get more out of that than listening yeah. to the top. Teach straight out of the avatar. We're actually just presenting to Chris and Nathaniel. We're the only people you need. Let's be real. <laughs> you guys just need help the most. That's why. <laughs> wow, this bell thing is so annoying. I'm trying to film a video. We're gonna we're going to do the Doe Library Traverse, which is this like ultra classic parkour esque traverse on the Berkeley campus because we've got a couple extra minutes. But Colin, what are the rules for the Doe Library Traverse? Uh, so no horizontal edges for your hands, um, only the vertical ones. Yeah. Your hands. Uh, you get like the the arets, basically. Okay. Um, no chalk and no climbing shoes. It's already a little marked up, but the goal is to keep it like looking like a library, not a climbing wall. Okay, so it starts here. <laughs> you got a shoe And then you gotta here. go around. Traverse around here. Tricky section here, then you hop. Then this is a sick jump here. Yeah. Yeah. And then around here. And then you've got a pretty gnarly mantle right here. And then you come into this corner. And then the crux is this move. You have this tiny ledge. And you gotta hop out to this wall here. And then like do a crazy back flag. Oh, look at that pogo. Oh! Stop. Making it to this last move a couple times way back in the day, but I've never never sent it from the start. Oh, ah, damn, it's damn. so legit. Oh, 
Alright, what's your changing corners, Veda? It's so interesting to change your momentum like that. Oh, that was clean. Oh, the back leg! So nice. And then that last? Getting around that corner is pretty legit too. Yeah, it's kind of like Sick. a start move again, but a little bit bigger. Hardest end of the day. Oh! In our defense, it did just rain, so I think there's a bit of bit more moisture in the air than normal, but uh... <laughs> oh, sick. Oh, that's sick. Pro tip, if you jump... Ooh. Oh, sketchy. Jump around in the things on the side of the sidewalk instead of walking on the sidewalk. It's way more applicable to comps climbing than you'd think. Just <laughs> forcing yourself to commit to kind of sketchy move and trust bad feet. Oh! oh. <laughs> it makes you so much more confident. Gets your brain foot connections going. Yeah, this is Chris's first reaction to boba tea. You don't have this in South Africa? Like we do, but I'll just get a coffee instead. Oh, that's so. fair. What's really fun is you can just shoot the boba at the straw. And that's like half of the experience of the drink. Maybe I can stick it to the camera? Oh, oh actually, no, it sticks to everything. Don't, please don't put it on my lens, but <laughs> shoot it at like Connor or something. Seriously, if they shoot so far, like you could hit the presenters up there. Just <laughs> In um, South Africa, there's a game called Bok Broleki. Okay. Where essentially, so we have our buck and the buck eat grass. And then when they put out the turds, it's like completely dried out. Yeah. So you can actually like, there's contests to see who can spit buck poo as far as you can. Wow. Uh, my aunt is a champion. Your aunt is a champion buck poo spitter. Buck poo spitter, yeah. When I'm doing something new, that's risky, that's scary, it's always a question of whether you're able to drop into flow to unlock your full potential in that moment. He knew about this long-standing project. The strongest Arizona locals had tried for 10 plus years and it still hadn't been done. But what a time. <laughs> <laughs> the first doctor I went to, was incredibly unsupportive and told me that I would have to get 12 vertebrae fused, that I should never climb again. I think just the motivation of having that outdoor climbing conditional on getting my work done is actually a really good motivator for me to get my work done. They've both just naturally grown together, my love for art and climbing, because the way I see them is actually very similar. Yeah, you would have asked me before I came over if I wanted to live in America or spend any time here, I would have told you how long. <laughs> <laughs> The, the rest of the world sees it as rather, rather ignorant. But then after moving to Salt Lake, I kind of fell, fell a little bit in love with the place and the people there. This is for Ross. Um, at first, I just wanted to say you're a huge inspiration for all the red-headed climbers. <laughs> if you were shipwrecked on a deserted island that had one boulder and it only had a technical slab and comp style run and jump boulders, uh, but during the shipwreck you only have enough time to take one pair of shoes, what? <laughs> Tolerate that discomfort and like that fear on the wall for just a few more seconds, just one more move, just get one more good move in and then you can take, right? I kind of had to work up to it. It, it is really difficult to balance uh, competition climbing and outdoor climbing. I think that my outdoor climbing helps my competition climbing and I think my competition climbing helps my outdoor climbing. Like, I cannot remember the last time I had like a quote unquote bad session. Like that doesn't happen because I always kind of adjust my expectations in the moment to make the most of whatever training I'm doing right then. And if my skin's really bad, I'm not gonna expect myself to do a bunch of crazy hard fiberglass campus blocks or something. Like, I'm just not gonna get that much out of that. So I'll focus on a, some other facet of, of training. What is your advice in terms of kind of like how we can apply flow and all these kind of like psychological concepts to a more normal like student um, lens? The flow cycle is struggle phase, then release, then flow, and recovery. So understanding those four distinct kind of components. And then if it is writing an essay, for example, getting all your sources, kind of writing out the outline for it before you sit down and like fully distract your free zone, because you're not just going to sit down and crank it out, right? You kind of have to do that struggle phase beforehand. Same thing for climbing. Like you're learning all of the skills. You're learning the slap technique. You're learning how to place your foot. You're doing the weighted pull-ups, the hangboard, or whatever it is 
that's kind of the struggle phase. And then that release phase is when you kind of break through and have that aha moment, and then you're fully in it. So that's something I try and seek out in my warm up, like doing lots of creative little movements and pushing myself to do kind of risky things throughout like the everyday life, whether that's just walking on curves instead of the sidewalk or we were just trying the Doe Library traverse right before we came over here. And that was super fun and just being comfortable doing things that are uncomfortable. Recently, taking recovery a lot more seriously has helped me a lot. Like flow states, it's a very mentally demanding state to be in and being more deliberate with active recovery techniques and working to kind of activate that parasympathetic nervous system and recharge. Just finishing up some delicious leftover cannelle from yesterday, but uh, we're about to walk over to this crazy good French bakery here in Berkeley. But before we do that, I figured I'd share a couple of the little tips I touched on yesterday in my presentation. Uh, big shout out to the Cal Climbing Club and Mosaic for making that whole event possible. Unfortunately, I'm not able to release the video I showed in the presentation just quite yet. Ultimately, the plan is to release it to some film festivals and then eventually it'll end up on my YouTube channel, so stay tuned. But basically it was all about finding flow and this is something I talked a lot about in the clinics that Marco and I did and will be a key point for a lot of the clinics moving forward. For you guys that are unfamiliar, flow is just an optimum state of consciousness where we feel and perform at our best. When action and awareness merge and you become fully immersed in the moment. On a more scientific level, this process does a ton of things that we don't have time to get into right now, but basically you start executing on a subconscious level. So there's this process called transient hyperfrontality, which basically means the temporary deactivation of the prefrontal cortex. That's the part of your brain responsible for a lot of high level executive thinking. Basically that starts to decrease activity and all of this energy that would otherwise be put towards distracting thoughts and the very conscious thinking that goes on in our brains, like on a day-to-day -day basis, like I'm gonna type on my computer right now or I'm gonna eat the rest of this delicious cannoli. All that kind of starts to slow down and you're left relying on your more primitive brain regions that all operate on a more subconscious level. So that's why when you're in this super, super deep immersed state of flow, it doesn't feel like you're making decisions. It's not like, okay, I'm gonna do this paddle move and then wait for my hips to move like this and then move to the next hold or whatever it is. You are fully in it and literally your body is making decisions for you. One other way to think about that, about transient hyperfrontality, is that it basically decreases self-reflective thinking. So all of the processes that are doubting you or double checking what you're about to do are on pause and you're just left able to do. To prime that state of flow, there's a bunch of things that have been really helpful for me. And there's a lot of flow triggers that, again, we don't have time to get into today. But understanding things like the challenge skill ratio, basically if a task is too easy, it's gonna leave you bored and not demand you be fully in it. Or if a task is too hard, you're just not physically able to rise to that occasion. So they found that the sweet spot is about 4% harder for any given activity than what you've previously done before. So maybe the climb is 4% harder than the last climb you did. And that compounds really, really quickly. So I like kind of, I like applying that into my warm up. So right when I get on the wall, maybe my 4% harder than what I'm able to comfortably do in that moment is only a V0 or something like that. But that quickly gets harder and harder as you get more warm. And then the next one that's been really helpful is super focused attention on the task that you're doing. For me, Meditation and breathing routines have been really, really helpful. Started off just with seeing how quickly I could decrease my heart rate in between boulders and then kind of progressed to seeing how quickly I could completely let everything go in my mind between a boulder. No matter if you topped it or fell in it or whatever it is, coming back down and spending the first two minutes in the chair before your next boulder, doing slow, really long, deep breaths to completely forget about that boulder and recover before the next climb. And then another really important one is clear and measurable goals. So for me, visualization has helped a lot with that. I say that because if you're not aware of what you were trying to do 
on the wall for any given move, it makes it really hard to learn from that move. You need to have a reference to compare your actual temp to. So for that reason, I think visualization is one of the most important tools in, in climbing as a whole, to be honest. And that was something I was really fortunate to be exposed to down in San Diego and all my coaches have always pushed that as a, a big factor in learning. You can combine a couple of these techniques, the breathing before you get on the wall, getting on a climb that's at that sweet spot, that challenge skill ratio about 4% harder. And then you can visualize yourself doing the move and then even film yourself and record yourself so when you get off the wall you can compare your actual attempt to what you thought you were gonna look like when you visualize yourself on the wall. And by doing that, you have a really clear picture of, oh, I thought my hips were gonna take this trajectory, but actually they were way down here. Or, oh, I didn't realize it, but my left foot is not hitting that hold accurately at all. So you can kind of add all of these different techniques together and come up with some pretty powerful results. There's a ton more we could get into. That's kind of just a, a sneak peek into what I talked about last night and what I've been fascinated with practicing and understanding the last couple years and ultimately it's something that I want to continue to teach to climbers but also high performers in any any field. Quick side note, Marco, Brooke, Ollie and I with the help of Al are hoping to do another clinic. In the comments below let me know what sort of techniques and routines you guys would be most psyched to learn about. Something that we did in the last clinic at Long Beach Rising was just focus on two skills for the whole day and I think that made it really beneficial to walk away with like two concrete skills that you really got better at and could incorporate into your daily routines. On that note we're gonna go grab some pastries and then tour around the rest of the Bay Area and then we'll go to finals here at the Mosaic Telegraph Turnup. How's the croissant? Dang. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Tiramisu almost, but with like puff croissant pastry on the top. Victor, if you're watching this, let us know in the comments what we're eating. It's not bad. It's not bad. Good. Flavor's good. I think milk texture could be a bit nicer, but... Yeah, Coffee yeah, itself is good. The milk on top is a little bit, yeah, see, kind of a little bit plopped yeah. on top. I, wow. Did you get hurt? No. That was nearly tremendously bad. Spinning. My heart rate. It's going. See, this is how you practice getting to flow. You gotta visualize and then execute. Oh yeah. That was sick. Tip, take care of your splits.
Thank you, Mike. You guys crushed oh. it, man. Dude, best gym owner in the game right here, seriously. Yeah. You're killing it. That was a fun comp. Seriously. If you're a gym and gonna put on a comp, he just set the bar oh. extremely high. Oh man, it crushed me when you, when you <laughs> fell off that, you know, the last hold. Of the that. slab was legit, yeah. Yeah, when you fell off the last hold of every boulder. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Am I wrong? laughs> so, what do you think of Mosaic? What do you think of the comp? The comp was sick, the gym super fun. Some of the best energy I felt in a gym in a, in a minute. I love kind of the small space. Yeah, the crowd was psyched, which is so fun to have all that energy right behind you. It's an aptly named comp, you know? Telegraph turn up is pretty on brand. You guys are great.